They're nearly ready. Dragging the feet because they're missing their dad. Do you think he will be at the course? I'm sure he will. I just don't know how he could stay out all night. Anything could have happened to him. He might have been run over. We would have heard if there was anything. I'm sorry. Been through all this before, haven't we? Why don't you let me call the police? No. I don't want them near. I don't want them involved. Where's he got us before? I'm sure George just needed time to be on his own, to think. The sight of that stupid chain that upset him. I could have killed little George. Yes, well, children can be very thoughtless, I know. Do you know they were actually proud of the fact that their dad was in trouble? It hit George then that they knew all about her. He doesn't think they're going to take him back in the fire brigade, you know. Oh, of course they will, once he's cleared. But he says he's going to plead guilty. I'm sure he didn't mean it. He, he just seems to have given up. But you mustn't. You've got to be strong for his and the children's sake. I suppose so. Hey, thanks again for staying with me last night. I told you I was glad to. I couldn't have stood it on my own. Hadn't you better be getting along? Oh, yeah. I'm that tired, I'm not thinking straight. Well, were they ready yet? Dad's throwing a wobbler in the car. Yes, Gordon, tell him they'll be right there. Right. Now, don't worry, leave everything to me. Now, you be good lads, eh? And don't make a mess in Mr Collins' car. Where's she going? Oh, she's just had to go out. Is she coming back? Of course she is. Can we have something to eat? No, you can't. You've got to go to school now. Come on. Off you go. Go on. Really, Anna, couldn't she have dropped them off in that taxi? Please, Paul, I'm too tired. I suppose that's my fault too, is it? It isn't my fault you stayed up all night. Will you stop that? You're late. Hadn't you better be going? And I'm really too tired to put up with you. Keep that ball still. Oh. How many pounds have we got? Pounds? How do I know? Well, you should know. You use them and we're not leaving any behind. I suppose you want to count the spoons as well. We can provide their own cutlery. I don't see the need for all this. We haven't even advertised this house yet, let alone this. You should be ashamed. Oh, don't be daft, woman. I know what I'm doing. A desirable residence with ultra-modern design, spacious rooms with open aspect. I don't know where you get it from. I remember that house we looked at in Ellsby before we came here. That was a palace. This is a little palace. You do want to rent it, don't you? Of course I do. Well, then we'll have to beat the competition, won't we? We can't just take anyone, and I don't want any of these punks. There aren't many of them about these days. Oh, it'd be just our lot to get one that was left. Perhaps we could get an elderly couple. It'd be company for us. <sighs> Might turn out like the Hardwicks. Well, there's nothing wrong with Ralph and Grace. I never said there was anything wrong with them. But they're not the sort to live in a desirable residence of ultra-modern design now, are they? I suppose we'll have to leave the carpets. Not if it's a family with kids, we won't. I don't want kids living next door to me. I mean, the Jackson twins, they're bad enough. The twins aren't much bother. Go away, they're hooligans. Mind you, what can you expect, having a criminal as a father? He's not come back yet. He went out last night and he's not come back. How do you know? Marie's light was on all night. Annabelle's been staying with her. I'd have thought she'd have more sense. It was very kind of her. Neighbourly. Neighbours of that kind we can do without. And I'm getting rid of that fence that Ned Kelly Jackson palmed off on us. It seems such a waste. I'm not taking any chances. You don't want me to end up behind bars with Jackson, do you?
What do you think she's up to? Oh. She's gone now. A young girl counting up the houses. I don't know what you're on about. Probably a reporter. Looking for Ned Kelly's life story before they send him down. Do you think I've got too many words in this advert? <laughs> too much to say as usual. Cost a fortune, that. We could try one of those free ones, like Mersey Mart, but they only come out once a week. They think Ned Kelly's going to make an appearance. They're going to have a long wait. Do you think so? It's obvious, isn't it? He's on his toes, scarpered. Poor Marie. You'd never think to look at George that he'd do anything wrong. You can't go by looks. That's why I want this tenancy agreement watertight. No loopholes, no Jacksons. Well, the solicitor will see to all that. I'll see that he does. But we haven't got any tenants yet. And we never will have if you don't decide where you want to advertise. When they know he's gone away, there'll be more than a reporter around. The police will be all over this close. Do you know that? Looking everywhere with a fine tooth comb. Why? Looking for anything that's been connected with him. Like that fence. Oh. I'm going to get shot of it. What about this advert? First things first, woman. What are you going to do? I've already told you I'm going to fight fire with fire. It's like trying to wake the dead. I haven't come into an awkward time, have I? No. Was it necessary to create so much fuss? I need an axe. An axe? An axe. You know, chop, chop. Oh, don't worry, I'm not going to use it on Edna. Oh, I think we've got one in the shed. Well, can I, can I borrow it? Oh, I suppose so. Go round the back, I'll get the key. Finished? Nice and tidy. I like a tidy shed. Shows a tidy mind. I'm afraid it's rather a light one. Oh, that's just the job. Will you be hanging any washing out? No. Smoke won't bother you then. Oh, you're having a bonfire. Yeah, I'm burning that fence. Oh, why? Just to be on the safe side. Sorry? It's that one George Jackson got for us. Yes, I know. Wouldn't like the coppers to, though. Hoppers? Why should they? Oh, God knows how he came by it. I'm sure he obtained it, quite honestly. But how can I be sure? Well, if you think that George Jackson... And it does make of... you think. Well, As I was saying to Edna before, there's some funny people in this world. Mm, I dare say. But you can do without them on your own doorstep. Banging on your door. Hey? Oh, hello. Hello. Does uh, Gordon Collins live here? Uh, yes, but he's gone to school. Oh. You're a reporter. Are you a friend of Gordon's? Uh, not exactly, no. Can I take a message? I'm his mother. I'd rather see him. It's a bit awkward, actually. Oh, I. Uh, he owes you quite a lot of money. Does he now? Perhaps you'd like to come in. Uh, no, I'm late for school. I had to hope to catch him before... Uh... What time does he get home? About five. But couldn't you tell me? Uh. No. no. Uh, shall I say who called? I'd rather speak to him myself. That girl looks as though she's in trouble. Bit of a ladies' man, has he? Your Gordon.
myself. Well, looks like it. But I thought we'd agreed that you were to pick Gordon and the Jackson twins up from school. No, Anna, you agreed. I was volunteered. Where are they? Oh, I threw them out, I'm afraid. What? I must be old age, eh? I couldn't stand one more question about how fast the car would go. What's the fastest you've ever been? Have you ever been in a crash? Where are they now? Gordon's walking them back. They wanted to stop off at the shop to buy Wiggly Wagglies, whatever they might be. Would you like a cup of tea? I'd love one. <sighs> Any news on Mr. Big? Oh, sorry. Any news on George Jackson? Not yet. I thought she'd have been home by now. Uh, the wheels of justice grind inexorably slowly. Mm. Oh, you'll never guess what happened to me today. Well, you'll never guess what happened to me today. Well, one of us is going to have to guess first. Well, mine is something that should make you very happy. Oh, what? You mean... We're a two-car family once again. Oh, Paul! <laughs> oh, why didn't you phone me? I wanted to see your face. <laughs> now you can definitely have that cup of tea. <laughs> what was your news? Oh, yes. A girl came round to see Gordon this afternoon. Ooh, that sounds like progress. Mm, I'm not so sure. She said... I'll go. Oh, it's you. Is he in yet? No, but he won't be long. Oh. Would you like to wait? Well, I, um... Look, if it's a bit awkward, better get it over with, hadn't you? Well... Uh... Come on. Come in. Paul, this is the girl I was telling you. Well, started to tell you about. Hello. You a friend of Gordon's? Not exactly. Sit down. Thanks. Well, if you're not exactly a friend of Gordon's, what are you? I'd uh, rather wait for Gordon, if you don't mind. I've just made some tea. Would you like some? Uh, no, no thanks. Well, uh, I'll see if I can help. Uh, perhaps I should come back. I'm sorry to have troubled you. Oh, really? It's no trouble. Gordon won't be long. I've just dropped him off at the top of the road. <sighs> this is awful. What is? This, me, being here. Why? I wrote him a letter asking for my money back. Oh, the mysterious Miss Walker. I wouldn't have bothered, and I really need the money. Are you sure it was Gordon you lent it to? He gave me his address. Oh, this doesn't look like Gordon's writing. Well, his friend wrote it. Didn't he tell you about me before my letter came? No, your letter came as quite a surprise. We all thought it was some sort of joke. Ten pounds isn't a joke. Do you usually go around lending money to people you've only just met? I thought he really needed it. Look, if it was Gordon, I'd make sure he pays you back. I don't see why he should lie. Well, neither do I. He seemed so nice at the disco. Excuse me. You're all right. Me, yeah, I'm all right. He went to class. Tell your mother. Yeah, I will do. Of course, I knew he would. Yeah. All I need now is hot bath. And a decent meal. Well, better let you get in then. Thanks for looking after the lads. Oh, that's all right. There weren't any problem. At least not to me. <laughs> <laughs> They've been ever so good, the Collinses. Yeah, I don't know. George. I don't think I'd like you with a beard. I wouldn't like you with one either. Hiya. Oh, 
Hello. Hello. There you are. Where on earth are... Well, the twins couldn't decide whether to have one wiggly waggly each or a packet of space bombs and a strato blaster between them. <laughs> What's wrong? Have you got nothing else to say? How do you mean? Well, we were hoping you could tell us. Me? Do you know who this is? No. Oh, let me introduce you. This is my son, Gordon. I'm sorry. I've never seen him before. Well, that's made my day. What else? Ned Kelly's back. Come home in style. You wouldn't think he was a common criminal. George is back. Him and Marie in a taxi, you'd think he'd be ashamed. Oh, I'd better go. You stay where you are. Well, I just And that... just keep away from them. And if he comes over there, I'll sort him out. How long are you going to be? I want to put the washing out. Just one more section, and that's all the evidence gone up in smoke. Well, if it wasn't Gordon, then who was it? I seem to have made a fool of myself. No, I'm sure it was a genuine mistake. I'm really very sorry. Was there anybody else with him at the disco? The one who gave you the address? Yes. Well, what did he look like? Oh, I couldn't see his face properly. But the one who called himself Gordon, he was quite nice looking, but... The other one, oh, he had horrible lanky hair all over his face. Gizmo. What? That's his name. I might have known the ground lad would be at the bottom of all this. Wait till I see him. Oh, come on, then. Where? Well, it's Damon Grant who owes you the money. He lives at number five. Well, come on, if you want your money. I won't be long, hopefully. Well, now that mystery's solved, how about that cup of tea? And we can discuss where we're going to keep our two cars. <laughs> no, I want you two to listen to what I'm going to tell you. I am not a robber, got that? Yeah. I've never stolen anything in my life. Never? Never. Even though I've had plenty of opportunity. Why didn't you then? Because I was brought up to be honest. And that's how we want you to be, so your man and I can be proud of you. Do you understand? Yeah. And no matter what other people tell you, or what you read in the paper, I want you to remember what I've said. I want you to be proud of me. We're always proud of you, are we? Cheeky beggar. Now, go on. Off you go and play for a bit. Your mum and I want to talk. We want to stay. Go on, up it. Where'd you go? Just walking around for the most part. Didn't you get any sleep? Dossed down for a couple of hours in the park. <sighs> Must look a sight. God knows what he thought of me in the court. I was worried sick you wouldn't turn up. Then even if you did, you'd said you were going to plead guilty. Yeah. Well, I can't give up, can I? I can't let Annabelle lose a thousand quid now, could I? I might have known you'd have turned up. You've always been brave, George. Not always. Not this past week. We'll get through this, all right. Yeah, of course we will. But it's not going to be easy. But you won't give in. You won't get so depressed that you'll change your mind. I don't know about being depressed. But I'm going to fight the court. And I'm going to fight Tommy McArdle all the way. I'm so proud of you, George. Are you? Yeah. You're such a good man. It doesn't look as though anyone's home. Mm. Do you want to come back to our house and wait? Oh, I'd rather not. It's a bit embarrassing. I'd rather go home. Well, I'll walk up the road with you then, if you like. Have you got anything else to do? No, not really. Come on. It's the only thing to do, to burn the evidence. <coughs> well, I hope nobody complains. Why should they complain? 
the smoke's going away from the houses. <coughs> well, if you get it on your chest. Never mind my chest. It's better than being made a show of in front of the neighbours. <coughs> you could have saved it for bonfire night. Look, it is of the utmost urgency that we get shut of it. Yes, if it doesn't get shut of you first. <coughs> What if he denies it? Yeah, he probably will. He's fond of practical jokes, is Damon Grant. Or what he and his asinine mates call jokes. He seems so nice and genuine. Mind you, I always made that mistake. Sorry? Oh, nothing. My brother said if I didn't get my money back, he was going to come down and part him from his breath. <laughs> well, that's a good job we got things sorted out, then. <laughs> yeah. Brothers or sisters? Uh, yeah, I've got an older sister, Lucy. She's in France at the moment. Oh, on holiday? No, staying with the family out there. Friends of my parents. Oh, I'd like that. <laughs> yeah, so would I. Uh, look, if I don't see Damon today, you don't need to worry. I will get the money. You can send it to me. You've got my address. Uh, well, uh, I'd rather give it to you, you know, personally. Make sure you get it. Are you sure? Yeah, why not? Plan a revenge against Damon, eh? <laughs> <laughs> OK, where? Uh, I don't really know. Uh, what about Rooney's? Rooney's? It's the cafe in town. Uh, OK, yeah. Uh, when? Tomorrow? Uh, OK. Right, what time? OK. Need some more. We've got no more, have we? Harold! Yeah, I'll take that. I can manage. Let Kevin do it. I can manage. There's life in the old dog yet, you know. Don't we know it? We've been listening to you barking all morning. Oh, I'll make a cup of tea, will you? What are you doing? I'm wrapping them up. Not like that. You've got to crumple the paper. We're only moving next door, there. The job's worth doing. It's worth doing well. She's doing it well. There'll be nothing left. We'll be drinking out of jam jars. I know what you need. Gran told me to do it this way. Gran? Mrs Cross. She's not your Gran. Mrs Cross told me to call her that. Dad, why don't you go and take a walk, eh? Because there's work to do. We'll do it. Here. What's this? A tin of milk. I don't need a tablet. It'll calm you down, make you feel better. I don't need calming down, and I don't need to feel better. No, but we do. You take the tablet, we get to feel better. And I'm the best judge when I take a tablet. Look, Dad, moving house is always a bit traumatic. Why don't you take a tablet, just in case the angina comes on again? It won't. Hey, when are you doing mine like? Oh, funny. You are? I said 
funny. I didn't see anything funny about it. I just asked you a simple question. When are you going to do mine? Oh, behave. What do you mean, behave? I've done them, haven't I? When? Last month. Just now. What? Oh, yeah. Now you come to mention it. I can't see a bit of circumstantial evidence. A few mud splashes on the brickwork. Listen, love, I've heard them all before. What did you use to wipe them down with? An oil rag? Sinbad, stop! Weird, Edna. Just look at the state of that water. It'd have been all right during the war, Edna. Comes round to do your windows and you don't have to worry about the black house. It's disgraceful, isn't it? Oh, God bless this woman. Couldn't you make it any hotter? It cuts through the dirt if it's hot. His shamming might fall apart, then. Shouldn't he supply his own walls, huh? Old Smile Wiles here, is he? It costs money, that lad. Hot water costs money. I didn't ask for it. It'll come off the bill. Are you all packed? What's it to you? I'm only being neighbourly. Oh, aye. Have you made that tea yet? Two sugars, Edna. You've got no chance, lad. I always make him a cup of tea, Harold. What is this? Hot water, cups of tea? He should be paying us. Here we go again. I'll send George round if you like. Oh, that'll uh, be for? nice. Well, to help you with the move. I don't think that would be a very good idea, love. I've got some very valuable stuff in here. I know you. You're not in the Navy now. Do the corners. It just means that he's afraid that George might break stuff, Marie. Yeah. George might break stuff. I'll see you, Edna. I'm going to make a cup of tea. Not for me, thanks. Just who do you think you are, Harold Cross? Boo! Oh. Hiya. I didn't think you were coming. Why? I just didn't. Hmm. Said I'd come, didn't I? Yeah, but... What? Oh, it doesn't matter. Come on. Why did you think I wouldn't show up? Well, it was getting a bit late. Oh, only five minutes. Seven. <laughs> Ever been stood up before? Uh, no. No, what makes you think that? Nothing. Happens, though, doesn't it? Yeah. Has it ever happened to you? No. <laughs> As you know. When? Damon Grant. Oh, that doesn't count. <laughs> anyway, you were late as well. No, I wasn't. You were? Two minutes. I wasn't. The bus was a bit late. Anyway, how do you know? What? Well, that I was late. Because hmm. so I was here first, wasn't I? So, you're going to take advantage of a lonely old woman, eh, Sonia? You're doing no such thing, Paul. I've known him too long, Anna, to rise to such a bait. Taking advantage of a lonely old woman? I'm one myself. Oh, you're neither lonely nor old. A young married woman. I'm a married woman. Fairly young married woman. Marriage is no bastion against loneliness. Too true. Oh, you cut me to the quick, Anna. Anyway, I don't think it's a matter of taking advantage. Mrs Lyons will get just as fair a deal from me as from anyone else. Uh -huh. What's the markup on antiques these days? 50%. Oh, for heaven's sake, Paul. Why don't you go and join the Liberals in Bournemouth? <laughs> oh, Anna's the great Liberal, not I. I encourage and applaud the pursuit of profit. Liberals like Anna encourage and bemoan it. Paul, I wouldn't dream of summing up a person's point of view in one sentence. You would. That's what makes you what you are and makes me liberal-minded. Nothing whatsoever to do with profit-seeking. <laughs> Bad. Oh, hey, Edna, what would I do without you? How many meetings? Five. It's good racing. I love Saturday racing. Fancy anything? One. GP Gordon sent it all the way up to here. George Duffield riding it? Yeah. Mind you, he should be riding it over there, that tea leaf. Who? Him, that fire, Bobby. He's not a tea leaf, he's innocent. Oh, behave, Edna. There's no smoke without fire. He's innocent. Well, if he is, that's even more reason why he should be on it. Justice for all, it's called. Go away. And bungalow. What? A bungalow's racing today, and we're moving into a bungalow. Twist forecast, then. I haven't got time for a bet. Will you put it on for us? Yeah, if you like. 50 pence twist, justice for all and bungalow. Oh, and Bobby Grant will want 50 pence twist. And there's Marie and George. Hang on, that's three quid. Well, I'll pay you when you come for your money. You better. What is it? Bungalow and justice for all. What are you two up to, then? Nothing. 
Just picking a couple of winners, you know. You what? I was just telling him what a mugs game it is, Harold. Uh, well, wasn't a Sinbad? You what? I, I was saying uh, it's it's a mugs game, isn't it? Oh, mugs game. That's what she's been saying. Mugs game. Yeah. Hello. Hello, Edna. Come and meet Sonia. Sonia Heaton, Edna Cross. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Going out. We're going to a house clearance. Sonia deals in antiques. Oh, you like Harold then? Oh, he's interested in antiques. No, he is one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're moving today? Yes. Well, Paul's not doing anything. He could give you a hand. Oh, would you? Oh, actually, I've one or two things planned. Oh, nonsense. Uh, Anna, I've uh, brought some work home. Well, you can do it tomorrow. He'd love to help. Oh. Harold! I don't oh, want to get embroiled with those two, Anna. It's all right, we can manage. Many hands make light work. Thanks all the same, Paul, but I don't think you'd be up to it. Sorry. Well, you're not exactly used to hard graft, are you? I can work as hard as any man. I'm sure you can, from behind a desk. From any position. You show them, Paul. I intend to. Damon Grung gets back from London next week. Oh. Is that all? What? Well, is that all? Oh. What do you want me to say? Well, I thought we were going to talk about it. If you like. Look, I mean, he stood you up. He borrowed money off you. I thought we were going to plan some sort of revenge. Well, we will, if you like. Just don't want to talk about it now. Why not? Hmm. I'm glad, aren't I? You're glad? Yeah. But why? Oh, you'll only laugh. Oh, no, I won't. You will. Oh, I won't. If you hadn't stood me up, I wouldn't have met you, would I? So, uh... You're glad you met me, then? I just said so, haven't I? That's posed. What? That picture. It's posed. They're trying to make it look like it's a natural action photograph, but it's posed. Well, how do you know? Just do. Did you kiss him? Kiss him and that. And that? Yeah, you know. I don't. Is this one posed? <laughs> Hang on, you'll have all the paintwork off. Doing our best. You're doing that all right. I might as well give me a blowtorch. Justice for all. And bungalow. And they have to finish first and second. Yeah. Edna, you can't hardly pick a winner, let alone first and second. It's what they call a hunch bet. Well, how much is it going to cost me? Uh, nothing. I'll take it out of my housekeeping. I'll give Harold Spam for his tea. He deserves it for what he said about George. Are you sure? Did I hear my name taken in vain? Hello, George. What are you saying? Started moving. George. What? Stay where you are. You what? They don't want any help. Poor Collins is helping him. Well, that's all the help they need. Ah, don't be soft. You can always use an extra pair of hands when you're moving. George, they don't need any help. Oh, go on, tell her, Edna. They can manage, George. What about the heavy stuff? Paul Collins and Kevin are moving those. <laughs> Paul Collins? He couldn't pick up a bug. What are you asking him for when I'm here? Well, they have, so let that be an end to her. Ah, don't be soft, Marie. George! What? Harry Cross doesn't want you in his house. Why? He says he's got a lot of valuable stuff in there. He doesn't want things broken, you see. It's Paul Collins and he's less likely to break them. 
justice for all, Edna. You know, before, when I asked about you and Damon, I wasn't being nosy. Yes, you were. <laughs> yes, I was. Why are boys like that? Like what? Well, they're going out with a girl. All they can think about is who she went out with before them. Well, if all boys are like that, then I don't feel so bad. Nearly all. Some are grown up. <laughs> Sorry. Well, they're probably no more grown up than anyone else. They probably just met someone like you and didn't ask anymore. What about you? <laughs> you shouldn't ask. It's all right for me to ask. Boys are allowed to boast about their sex ploys. Well, not a lot to boast about, I'm afraid. <laughs> Don't believe you. Yes, you do. I haven't asked many girls out. Why? Say they'd say no. Of course they might say no. Yes, so what do I do then? Ask somebody else. Have you ever asked a boy out? Of course. And he said yes? Yes. You wait till he says no. Oh, God, Blan, who packed this? You did. I didn't. Did you do this, Jessica? No. Then who? Kevin. Kevin only taped them. You've packed them. Well, it's your fault. You should have held the bottom. There's no need to hold the bottom if it's been taped. You just put too much stuff in, that's all. All you've done is moan at people who are trying to help. Well, if you want to help, woman, go and make a cup of tea. The window cleaner can get tea, but I can't, and I'm your husband. I can't make tea. You what? The kettle's been packed. The kettle's been packed? What sort of an idiot would do that? We're not moving in there till tomorrow. Added. Oh. I didn't realise. You didn't realise? The kettle's the last thing to be packed. Look, I'm sorry. Oh, do you mind? Just stop picking on me. You've been picking Get on me all. Up. So, he's nothing up. He's just taking his tablet, that's all. I'm not taking any tablet. If you don't take your tablet, I won't help, Jessica won't help, and Kevin won't help. Then me and Paul will do us on our own, won't we? What? Here we are. Oh, how lovely. Do you take milk and sugar? Uh, just milk. It must have been a terrible shock for you, uh, losing your husband like that. It was. My husband's fighting fit, thank God. Do thank God. Good health is precious. Thank you. Still, you must have some lovely memories. Well, they must be a comfort to you. Don't you believe it? The sweeter the memory, the greater the sense of loss. I try not to remember now. But I do. Have you any children? Two girls and a boy. Edinburgh, Newcastle and Cardiff. They wouldn't stay with you? Oh, I wouldn't let them. I had a furious row with my son. He wanted to play male Cordelia to my female Lear. The two of us alone in this great gilded cage. Young people should lead their own lives. I have a daughter doing just that at the moment, in France. Oh, that's good. I miss her, though. Oh, the greater the ache in being apart, the sweeter the eventual meeting. Words to suit all occasions. <laughs> May I guess at it? Pardon? You said there was only one item not for sale. May I guess at it? Yes. The grandfather clock. <laughs> It is the most beautiful grandfather clock I have ever seen in my life, Mrs. Lyons. From a real grandfather, too. Oh, I suppose it's not a proper thing for a grandmother to pass things on to her grandchildren. But I'm sure I shall find words to suit the occasion. Do you take milk and sugar? Are you happy now? Yes. Right, then we can get started. And you, my girl, can pack that box properly. No. Yes. No, Kevin. 
I'll do it when he says please. What? When you say please. Please. Thank you. Uh, no, no sugar, thanks. I like your ears. I do. They're just ears. Earlobes are the softest part of your body. Do you know that? No. Do anything with earlobes. You can bite them, or you can pierce them. Why don't you? Pierce my ears. Yeah. You can't be serious. Hmm, just one of them. Well, then wear one earring. <laughs> Wouldn't be much point otherwise. My parents have a fit. It's your ear. No, I couldn't. Oh. Suit yourself. If you want to go around looking like a bank manager all day, that's your business. I don't look like a bank manager. Don't you? No. Which one? Barclays. <laughs> Which year? Any year. Well, isn't there some sort of rule? What? Well, you know, I thought if you get a certain ear done, you were a bit, a bit gay. <laughs> There's no rule like that. You please yourself. Does it hurt? <laughs> when can I expect to hear from you? I'll type up an itemised list for you, post it on Monday, you'll get it Tuesday, and then we can take it from there. Assuming everything's all right, how long will it take? Well, we could have a van up here on Wednesday and clear it in half a day. Half a day? If that's all right. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, that's fine. Thanks for coming. Bye. Bye-bye, Mrs Lyons. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs Lyons. Uh, lovely to meet you. Thank you. Bye-bye. You know what she was thinking, don't you? Mm-hmm. Lifetime to fill that house. And half a day to clear it. I know, Anna. I deal in antiques. I meet five or six Mrs. Lyons's a week. Something should be done. Well, do it. Two Chinese boy, four to one. Ten round. P30, first, number six, justice for all, 15 to two. What are you doing, Second, woman? Number eight, bungalow, nine to one. Get hold of it, will you? I've got to go. Where? Marie's. Now? Yes. Oh, God damn it. What's she up to now? Here, give his hand, will you? What are you doing? Helping. Helping to kill me. It's heavy enough without putting that on top. Well, what should I do with it? Put it on the floor. Use your love. You're not altogether stupid, are you? No, I'm not. Leastways, not so stupid I can't see what's up with you. Oh, I. And what is the matter with me, eh? It's not my fault Kevin's not me dad. It's not my fault I'm not your grandchild. First and second. Yeah. George, yeah. come here. How much? Well, uh, Simba will bring it around tomorrow, but 15 to 2 and 9 to 1. It should be about 35 pounds. What, between us? Each. Each. Oh. 35 pounds, George. What? You've won 35 pounds on the horses. Didn't even know I'd had a bet. Edna and I did it between us, eh? Guess what it was called? Surprise me. No, justice for all. <laughs> well, if it can triumph on a race course, George, it can triumph anywhere. It's an omen. What are you going to do with the money? I'm going to clue. Well, I have, love. You, me and the kids are going to have a picnic by the lake. Get away from it all, eh? Ah. <laughs> so you think I'm an old moaner, eh? Sometimes. At the time, I don't mean it, though. Then why do you do it? Because I'm expected to moan. Edna loves it. I don't. I bet you do it. I bet you do things at school because you've got to do them. Not because you feel like doing them. But you're grown up. Nobody ever grows up, love. You mean it when you moan at me. You meant it when you kept me locked out that time. You did, didn't you? Look, I'll tell you something, Jess. 
You won't understand now, but one day you will, love. If I'd have seen you out in the street with those our Kevin, I would have said to myself, what a little cracker. But when you're with Kevin, I don't see what you are, love. I see what you aren't. And you said it yourself. You're not Kevin's. And you're not mine. I can't tell that. I know you can't, love. I want to tell you something. It'll not be mentioned again. And I'll tell you another thing. If Kev never does give me a grandchild, he couldn't do better than to give me one, just like you. Are you all on strike? Where the hell have you been, woman? to stand here like this. I won't keep it much longer, girl. It won't slip, you know. It's a brand new ladder. Oh, you can't suss these new ladders. Hey. What? I can see right up your trouser leg. Hey. <laughs> yeah, well, make the most of it while you can. All right, Bob. All right, Sage, lad. How's it going? Oh, well, she'll be finished in an hour or two. I'll give you a hand if you're hang on. Behave yourself. You're a trade union official. You haven't got a day's work in you. Oh, listen to him, will you, Karen? Anyway, you'll be all right now, son. You and that bungalow have got a lot in common. How do you mean? Well, both of you have got nothing upstairs. <laughs> Show you what I've got upstairs if I come up that ladder. And I, I hate. I know she's a woman of the world, but you can still make our Karen blush, you know. Oh, someone's in then. You what? Every time I come for money, they're all out round here. Oh, so that's what you're after, money? Of course I am, the windows. How much are you going to pay me? You what? Hot water, cups of tea. You should be paying us. Oh, behave, H. Come on, give us a fiver. You what? A fiver. You were only there five minutes, a lick and a promise. Come on, I charge a pound a wash five weeks a fiver. Edna? Oh, come on, H. I'm in a hurry. What? Oh, I lost him, Dad. All right, girl. Do we owe him five weeks? Sinbad, I pay you every time. But he doesn't understand, that. Now, you owe me for this house once, right, but I've done the bungalow four times, haven't I? You must be joking, pal. If you're daft enough to clean the windows on an empty bungalow, that's your problem, not mine. Well, you own it now, don't you? Now, yes, but not when you clean the windows. Well, what am I going to do for me money? you better sell Alan Partridge. And where's he? Q8. You are? Q8? Oh, that's great, isn't it? What, you going to pay me in sand? Sinbad, I'll pay you. Oh, well, you're not a bad one, Edna. Out of my winnings. Oh. What do you mean, now? Oh? Well, I didn't get the bet on in time, Edna. You didn't? Well, what am I going to do? Marie and George are spending it right now. I'm sorry, girl. 
Do you remember the first time you went on a lake, George? First time I ever went on a lake? Yeah. No. Don't you? Oh, I mean, it's not the sort of thing you remember, is it? It is. No, it isn't. It's not like the first time you ever... I was your first time, George. <laughs> first and last, Louis. I can remember it. The first time I went on a lake. My mum and dad must have been talking for once in their lives. They took us to Newsham Park. Well, Michelle wasn't even born. Just me and our Petra. She was still in her pram. It squeaked. <laughs> <laughs> we were walking by the lake and... <laughs> my mum said... Well, I think it was my mum, but it could have been my dad. Said, oh, we're never going to get a bus at this time. Well, I didn't know what Pico I was. But the wind was just coming up and made all the top of the lake all peak. And I thought that that was peak hour. I thought that the lake did that at the same time every day. <laughs> Life's funny. Yeah. Oh. Oh. You shouldn't have volunteered if it was going to do this to you. Well, you volunteered me, as I seem to remember. Thank God he'd already moved that piano. <laughs> oh, Paul. Mm? Harold Cross is coming over. I am not in. Well, what shall I say? Tell him I've had a cardiac arrest. I don't think that's very funny. Hello. Hello, love. Is Paul in? Um, no, I'm afraid he isn't. What time are you expecting him? Very soon. Well, when he does come in, we'll ask him to call over. There's still some bits and pieces to be carted to the bungalow. Yes, I'm sure he'll be over like a shot. Oh, thanks, love. Bye. Bye. Paul. I'm going to have a hot bath. Don't go burying the dog in there. <laughs> Good old Edna, eh? Yeah, 35 quid. Yeah. Hey, don't get sand in your hair. You've brought the beach home with you. You what? Me mam, when we've been on the beach, she used to drag our socks off and half hundred weight of sand had poured out. <laughs> yeah. She'd get a flannel, scrape it out from between our toes. She used to have a red mark for a week. Down me knickers. You what? Dad. I used to get the sand down my knickers and the elastic had held it there. I'd have sand all around the top of my legs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dad? Yeah? Well, if we kept on digging down, wouldn't we reach Australia? <laughs> nope. Okay. We would Australia down there. I think you need something a bit more sophisticated than a plazzy shovel. <laughs> it's like trying to get blood out of a stone round here. Everyone's out. But everyone knows you're loaded. Oh, behave. What, with a big wind around like this and drawing in that king coal every week? Hey, shut up, will you? <laughs> You're all right, son. Your secret's safe with me. Yeah, well, give us a pound, will you? Karen, get him a pound out the house, love. <laughs> I can move now, can I? Yes, girl, you can move. Very nice, Bob. Hey, she's a little lady. The ladders. Oh, these? They're nah, baddies. Well, knock off, eh? Behave yourself. He's just opened the two-liar shop, hasn't he? He rents this sort of stuff out. Very nice. Yeah. Anyway, I'll see you, Bob. Hey, just a minute, Sinbad, lad. What? Can't you, uh, can't you forget something? What? A 50 pence twist forecast, bungalow and justice for all. Oh, you're not going to like this, Bob. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Well, I was too late to get it on, you know. Oh, what a shame. Yeah, just got there and they were off. I asked the counter clerk, like, but she knocked me back. Was that in Kelly's betting shop down by the swan? Mm, yeah. Don't worry, I'll have a word with the manager. He's a good owl mate of mine. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't think he was there, Bob. Not there? No, he was out getting his dinner. During racing hours? Yeah. Half past three in the afternoon? Yeah. Have you told this little story to Edna? Now, listen, Simbad. Me, with like a hundred and five pound day, before I fill you full of mastic. Gordon? Hi. Are you okay? 
Yeah, fine. Well, are you going to stay up here all day? Sundays are boring. Well, what about food? Well, I'm not really hungry. Are you sure you're all right? Yeah, of course I am. If you hear your father shouting for the fiery jack, it's under the wash basin. The what? Joke, Gordon. Oh. Hey, careful, not in my face. Well, don't move your arms. Don't chuck it in my face, then. We'll move Betty, dear. We'll put it under you. Great. We agree to tunneling. When you put you in jail, we'll tunnel under the neck and get you out. Gary, I'm not going to jail. I'm innocent. It doesn't matter, cos if you were guilty, we'd still tunnel under and get you out. Thanks very much. You should go. No, go and bury your own dad. He is buried. Where? By our church, he said. Well, our dad's going to jail. I'm not going to jail. Is he a robber? Yeah. No, I'm not a robber. Would you mind if I sit down? No, sit down. My legs are aching. He's dragged me round every square yard of Southport. Oh, uh, we've just sat about all day. Apart from a piggyback fight. Mum! Oh, not now, Sammy. Don't give me a go. You can't make them. Can I go paddling then? You go too far out. I won't. Just up to here. Honest. Promise? Yeah. Oh, go on then. <laughs> Anything for a break. Yeah, I don't know what you mean. Time on a tradition, isn't it? What? That. That's what Sammy misses. Betty and his dad on the beach. Oh, hello. Uh, Gordon in. It's Cathy, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Come in. Oh, thanks. Gordon, someone to see you. Would you like a cup of tea? Uh, yeah, thanks. Hiya. Oh, yeah. oh, hello. Um, sit down. So, uh, how are you then? Fine, thanks. <laughs> Good. Gordon didn't tell me he was expecting company. I wasn't. Gordon? I hope not. I'm underneath it. Might still be here next year. Probably won't be here in the morning. It will. Well, it might all crumble or it could start raining and wash it away. If you build a roof over with it, it'll stop the rain getting at it. Yeah, you could have a bash. He's posing. If we build the wall sticky enough, it'll never crumble. He wants us to wait for winter. Who? That lad who wants it to bury you. What did your husband do? He's a fireman. Do they get the weekends off? Sometimes. Hey, your lad's waving. He's a bit far out, isn't he? He's not waving, George. He's drowning. You what? He's drowning! Robbie! Get me out of here, will you? Paul, he's brought a girl round. Oh. <laughs> well, you're as pleased when you see her. Why? Who is it? Karen Grant? <laughs> Kathy. Kathy? You know, the girl with the hair. Oh. Well, she seemed quite nice. 
It is not likely to lead him astray. Well, actually, Paul, now that you mention it, you're not going to believe this, but... It's only my ear, Dad. <sighs> True enough, Gordon. I suppose we should be grateful for small mercies. Your nose must have been a very attractive target. Tell me, young lady, are there any other parts of my son's anatomy you wish to mutilate? Paul? It's decoration, Dad, not mutilation. Oh, wow. Well. Is it now? And how far is this decoration going to go? Well, how do you mean? Well, are you contemplating having the other ear down, for example? Bone through your nose, perhaps? Safety pin. You put a safety pin through your nose. Pigtails and a dress? No. It's a good idea. Oh, it's an idea. One that's not likely to appeal to a prospective employer. I can't quite see Lloyd's bank falling over themselves to employ the boy George of Brookside. But boy George is a millionaire, Paul. Don't you want your son to emulate success? Boy George is a success because he can sing. Well, presumably he can sing. I never quite mustered up the necessary courage to listen. I doubt if he'd be successful in any other walk of life. Danny LaRue, having cornered the market in his only other possible sphere of activity, I should lock up your jewellery if I were you, Anna. I don't know what to say. There's no need to say anything, Lord. She saved his life. No need to what anybody would have done. jail now, can he, Mum? He's a hero. He's always been a hero, son. Back a bit, Kevin. Uh, right. Down. Oh. A bit your way, Sal. Oh, come on, Mum. That's right. Okay. You sure? Yes. Good. Anything left in the house? A box of blankets. <clears throat> okay. You won't. Yes, no. You won't, we love. If you like. All right. And while we're away, your auntie Edna might make a pot of tea for us. He's changed a bit, hasn't he? In what way? You think he found a soft spot for my errant daughter? He has. Are we having a cup of tea? Oh, aren't we? No, I'll make it. I'll make it. You should be sitting down. You need a rest. You're going to be cosy here, Mum. Soon be like a home. Hey, uh, what happened? In what way? Between Dad and Jessica. You're as wise as I am, Kevin. <laughs> He's a funny old beggar. Uh, I was thinking, Kevin, it would be nice if we could see more of Jessica and you and Sal. We'll try, Mum. Can't be very nice for you having to live in Sal's house. It's all right. The man should own the house. You're not a women's liver, Mum. Not where my son's concerned. <laughs> I, I was thinking, our old house next door's for sale. What, moving next door? Well, uh, we'd be near then, and if Harold was ill... Dad set his heart on letting it. I could make him change his mind. It's been advertised in the paper, though, hasn't it? No, it hasn't. He said it would be too expensive. He's written off to people. The university and hospitals. He said that's what people do these days, students and nurses and hospital porters. I would rather have advertised it in the paper. Oh, he knows what he's doing, Mum. Do you think he'd sooner see a gang of flighty nurses and students other than his own son? Well, as a matter of fact, I do, Mum, yes. Oh, surely not. Well, let's wait and see what happens, Mum, eh? Right, I think we'll go for a walk then, eh? Now? Yeah, why not? Shouldn't you wait for it to go dark? 
Or is it luminous? <laughs> we hadn't thought of that. You're not going? Yeah, just for a walk. But you haven't eaten. I'll get something at mine. Vegetarian, no doubt. No. Oh. Anyway, let's go, shall we? Yeah, see you. Bye. See you, Mum. We await your return with bated breath, Gordon. What? Well, who knows? You might have to have a leg off next. Anything to serve the interests of fashion. See you, Dad. Bye. Bye. Sometimes you go too far. I go too far. I'm not the one with a hoop through my ear. It was only a tiny earring. Well, by that logic, a bra would be acceptable, so long as it's 30 double A or whatever. Oh, nonsense, Paul. Be far too tight. <laughs> Is it made? Pardon? The tea. Nearly. My mouth's like the bottom of a budgie's cage. Uh, Mr Cross. Yeah? You go in, Jess. Won't be a minute. Oh. Yeah? Have you spoken to Mrs Cross about the house? What about it? About who's going to move in? Oh, we're letting it, love. For the time being, anyway. Supposing we were to move in, me and, and Kevin and Jessica, would you be keen on the idea? Over my dead body. My sentiments, exactly. You don't want the house? I've got a house. Well, what are you on about it for? Mrs Cross seems to think it's a good idea. You leave Edna to me. Is Edna there, please? Uh, yes, she is. Bobby Brown? Yeah. Yeah, I'm Kevin. Oh, what do you do? What do you think of the garden? I'm going to change it all round. Be a lot of work. I'm not scared of a Billy Graft. Are you sure you're up to it? Of course I am. We could do with someone young to give us a hand. Oh, I. There might be someone next door who would give us a hand. I wouldn't ask them. Why not? Because I wouldn't want strangers to do it. I'll do it myself. They might not be strangers. Of course they would. It might be someone we know. Such as? Well, an old friend of... Or who? Well, I don't know, do I? Look at me. When I sell this house, I'm going to sell it to strangers, not to somebody I know that's going to live on top of me. Right? Right. Mum, I'll be proud of this Hello, Edna, love. Hello, Bob. What can I do for you? You're joking, aren't you, Gail? I've come for me winnings. What's the matter? I don't know how to tell you, Bobby. Oh, wait, don't tell me you never put the bet on. No, he never. Ah, oh, come on, Ed. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Bobby. I'm sorry, you know, because you're going to have to pay up. Oh. As far as I'm concerned, that bet was on. Now, it's your responsibility, not mine. Oh, dear. He was only joking. He did put it on. <laughs> <laughs> it's all there, Queen. £63. 70 No, they take £7 tax out. There's no tax on the forecast. I'll kill him. Aye, aye, what's going on here, then? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. What's with the money, then? I was just giving it to Edna. Why? I lent it to him and he's paying me back. You lent it to him? Yes. There's over 50 quid here. So? What are you doing lending this kind of money out? Look, I'll have to get You just hang on. Hang on, Sheila wants me. She should make me tea. It was the horses, wasn't it? What? It was the horses. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. And you, you should be ashamed of yourself. Me? Why? Encouraging old women to gamble money on horses. Don't you call me an old woman. I think you've got this the wrong way round, haven't you, pal? Me? Encouraging it? And it's gonna stop. Oh, God, blimey, that takes the biscuit, that does. She hasn't had a bet for years. She moves up here, now she's off again. Dad? What? Have you moved the ladder? No, why have you? Well, of course I haven't. Hey, have you been messing around with this ladder? I never touched it. Oh, why, well, Barry will go mad. Well, who'd be bothered about pinching the ladder? I know. Who? A winter cleaner. Send bad! I'll swing for him!
Terry. He's got to be told sooner or later. I know. Well, tell him now, then. I can't. He's me dad. Terry, you're a grown man. I know. Look, it's just a bit awkward, that's all. I mean, if my ma was still about, it'd be all right, but she's not. And I'd just be leaving him on his own. But you've left him on his own for months. I know, but he's always expected me back. If I tell him I'm shacking up at you, that's it, isn't it? It's final. I don't believe this. And get your record player off him, at least. I can't. Why not? Cos if I start moving stuff out, it's obvious, isn't it? I've left. But you've been left for months. I know, but it isn't official. All right. When? Whenever you like. Now? We can't. But we've got to go over to the Grants and get that ladder. Tonight, then? We're going out tonight. All right, first thing in the morning, right? Right. Are you just up? I've been up hours. Lazy Isis. I said I've been up hours. What are you doing here, anyway? Private study. Private study? Yes. Oh, I don't know. School kids these days. Do lights these days. Oh, no. What? My dad. Hiya, kid. Hiya, Dad. Hiya, Dad. Are you still here? Well, I phoned up the doll and they said it's best to sign on in the afternoon. No, they never. You just got out of bed? No. You're still eating your breakfast, aren't you? Oh, this. It's my dinner. Cornflakes? Well, they're on twice a day now, see? Cos it's a cereal. <laughs> Is it? Well, you just get down the doll and sign on. All right. I'm going. You home again, kid? Tuesday afternoon, Dad. Private study. Oh. Oh, that's all right, Karen. Love you. Sag as much as you want. Damon, just go and sign on, will you, lad? Look, I don't know what all the fuss is about. I've been down in London for three weeks. I brought me money back. Will you please go? I'm going. Yeah. And don't come back till you sign on. Do you hear me? Bye. Oh, here's one from a teacher, Harold. He's married. Any kids? Two. No chance. Why not? Well, we have enough trouble with Ned Kelly's twins over the road, don't we? Marie's kids are lovely. Aye, when they're asleep. Still, what can you expect with a criminal for a father? Harold. Details of employment for five years or three years. What? It's me questionnaire to ask them details for the last five years' employment or the last three. Three. Five, it says, then. All actors, Harold. No chance. Three of them. Wouldn't have them over the doorstep. Why not? They're always on the pot. Reference is essential. How do you spell essential? I don't know. Why are they always on the pot? References required, then. The bill right over there with an upstairs toilet. You are? An upstairs toilet, then they wouldn't need to use the pot. The saner people locked up. There you go, lady. Hold on. Don't say I never give you nothing. What's that you're reading? Sociology. Karl Marx. Workers of the world unite. You have nothing to lose but the name Doe Lice. What are you doing home anyway? I've got a meeting to go to tonight. Oh, me mum will be pleased. Where is she? She's gone round to Teresa's. I think she's been knitting something for the baby. I can't wait. <laughs> Neither can I. Hello, Mr Grant. Hi, Karen. Hi, Sarah. Come in, son. What can we do for you? Uh, Barry sent me around for that ladder. Hey? You know that ladder you borrowed off us? Well, we want it for a customer. Oh, uh... Well, I'm afraid there's a bit of bad news for you, lad. Why? Why is the bad news? Karen. You lent it to somebody. Who? A window cleaner. Who exactly? 
Sinbad. Sinbad? Oh, hey, we won't see that again. Look, leave it to me. You'll get it back, honest. But we want it for Thursday. It's as good as there. Do you want a cup of tea? Uh, no, thanks. I've got to get off. Uh, Michelle's waiting. I I'll see you later, then. See you, Karen. Sure. Sure, right. lad. What are you going to do? I don't know. No one's clapped eyes on Sinbad since he took it. You'll have to buy them a new one. I know. And you know what the bad part of this is, don't you? I can't even take it out of Sinbad's face. It's only ten pence there now. Why do they call him that? Sinbad. Sinbad the sailor. Cleans the windows as if the poor souls. No, she's not in. Must be out then. Brilliant. Do you think so? Where's the ladder? Eh, uh, I haven't got it. He's lent it to someone. He's got a cheek, hasn't he? Lending out other people's stuff. Well, it's no worse than what we do. I mean, people come in to get their stuff repaired, don't they? And we lend it out to others. Come on. Where are we going? The shop. Oh, Barry and Celia can manage the shop. Yeah, but we've got nothing else to do, have we? We have. There's your dad. Oh, I, yeah. Uh... Well, there's no excuse not to do it now, is there? Well, you see, I sort of, um, psyched myself up to doing it tomorrow. Well, you can sort of psych yourself up to doing it now. Come on. I love submissive women. Are you? What's up? No. What's up? Nothing. Um, Damon, isn't it? What? Damon. Look, stop messing about, will you? I'm not messing. I mean, it's been that long since I've seen you. I forgot what you look like. Well, I've been down in London, haven't I? Well, you must have been there a long time. Cos in that time, there's been something invented called a penny post. And then after that comes something called a telephone. Look, I couldn't write or phone. I was working. Oh, yeah. All day and all night. Oh, look, hang on. Do you mind? Well, hang on, will you? What for? Yeah, to talk. No chance. Oh, come on, hang on. Look, what have I told you? Well, hang on a minute. I've only got an hour. I've got things to do. Bunk off. What? Bunk off. Come with us. Where are I? Anywhere. I have a laugh. Doing what? Anything. Such as? Um, I've got to sign on. See ya. Oh, well, after school, then. Get lost. Oh, come on, Lynn. Don't be tight. After school. How do I know you're going to show up? I mean, for all I know, you might go back to London again, mightn't you? I won't. Oh, come on. Four o'clock. Four o'clock. And I'm not hanging around, not even for a minute. No, I'll be here, honest. Four o'clock. Here, do this, will you? What is it? It's me questionnaire. I'm not going to do that. Oh, for God's sake, woman, it's only a trial run, isn't it? Well, I don't understand it. It's easy. Look, there's ten questions with all possible answers. All you've got to do is tick the answers. I haven't got a pen. Here. How do I know which are the right ones? For God's sake, woman, that's the point. You don't know. You tick the ones that apply to you, and each one's got a mark out of ten. Then I add the score up at the end. Well, how many am I supposed to score? 90 to 100, you're an ideal tenant. 75 to 90, you're still good. 50 to 75, you're OK, but you need watching. And under 50, I'll phone the police. Stupid. Oh, get on with it, will you? Oh, <laughs> All right, Tay. Eh? All right, Leggers. Like what are you doing here? What do you think? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's the first time. Yeah. Might as well. This is going to take ages. There's no hurry, is there? Well, I've got to meet someone, see. Uh, do you reckon we're in the right place? Yeah. See how to Kate says, don't it? So you don't have to go to the job centre first? Job centre? They ought to do that place under the Trade Descriptions <laughs> Act. Still think you've got to go. We learnt all about signing on in our careers class. <laughs> no, we're in the right place. OK, then. How 
many? How many? Twenty-three. Twenty-three? What does that make me? A liability. No. Oh, I haven't had a sniff of a job. Yeah, lad. Haven't you ever heard of saucers? Don't need saucers with mugs. It's not a carpet we need in here, it's a bath mat. Oh, behave, will you? How'd you put up with them? I'm a masochist. <laughs> no, I haven't worked now for... Uh, how long is it, son? About six years. Took the money off the Mint Rock, you know. Mint Rock? The dock. Ah, I was a docker for years. Then they dangled a few thousand quid in front of me, and I sold me job. And you regret it? Not half game. Never worked since. And it wasn't just my job I was selling, you know. It was his. He could be there by now. The miners are right about that. How'd you manage? We manage. Together we manage, don't we, lad? Look, we want to sign on. You've come to the right place, then, haven't you? Well? Well, what? Can we sign on? Fresh claim, is it? Yeah. You have to go to the job centre first. Uh -huh. What for? To look for a job. There are no jobs. How do you know if you haven't looked? Look. Can't we sign on here now and then go to the job centre after? No, because you have to get a form from the job centre before you can make a fresh claim. Well, how long will that take? I've no idea. It's not going to make you late for work, though, is it? <laughs> Look, I've got to meet someone soon. Oh, sorry. Come, Ed. <laughs> Damon, don't say it. Say what? Nothing. Hey, I was only going to say I told you so. Stupid questions, anyway. I think I'll get you evicted. How many did I get for the first one, the one about my age? Two. Two? Well, you're over 55, aren't you? That carries two points. Well, I can't help my age. Look, woman, I'm looking for an ideal tenant here, not somebody with one foot in the grave. I don't want somebody snuffing it two days before the rent's due. Well, you'd only get two points yourself, then, wouldn't you? That's nothing to do with it. 23 points. Who am I married to? Oh, oh come out. <laughs> I'm back. I can see that. So? So? So can I sign on now, please? If you don't mind, I'm busy. Right, you're signing down, you look, have to be... Love, love, I'm in a hurry. I'm dealing with this gentleman, if you don't mind. Oh, come on, love, I'm going to be late. All right, all right. Could you have me on that one with me? <laughs> Wouldn't she let you in, then, eh? No, I prefer your company. <laughs> oh, darling. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's going to be there soon. Who is? Look, I can't. We're worrying now, aren't we? Well, can't I do it tomorrow? It'll only be the same tomorrow. What'll be the same tomorrow? Oh, hey, nothing. Hey, I was beginning to think you forgot your way home. <laughs> well, uh, as a matter of fact, I'd, um... What? I've come for my record player. Hey. My record player? What do you want your record player for? What do you think, to play records on? Well, you can play records here, can't you? Well, er... Uh... What is it? Luke, you can tell me, son. I'm your dad. Tell him. Well, it isn't just me record player. What? I've come from the other bits and pieces as well. Oh. Terry and I are living together.
Well, you need the case then, won't you? You can bottom line. Look at this. Shut up. I'm only saying. Shut up. Right. We've been down the job centre and they gave us this. So can we sign on now, please? Yeah. Only you'll have to hurry up because we've got a job on the side and we're late for it. A job on the side? Joke. One of those things you laugh at if you've got a sense of humour. Oh. You've got a sense of humour, have you? Yeah. Well, I'm glad about that because you're going to need it. You're in the wrong queue. What? You want fresh claims. Over there. You knew we were fresh claims, didn't you? And you made us queue up twice for nothing. I didn't make you. Then why didn't you tell us? You never asked. Oh, you think you're funny, you, don't you? <laughs> oh, we've got to go and see me, bird. Hey, you've got to sign on and all. Come on, let's spew it. Well, behave, will you? Look, this will still be here tomorrow. She won't. Hey, you'll lose a day's dole, Damon. Oh, I'll see you round. <sighs> Karen? Yeah? You've got a visitor. Who is it? Gypsy Rose Lee, I think. <laughs> Very good. I have no harm intended, son. Are you just wearing it for a bet? No, it's, uh, it's here to stay. <laughs> Hello. Hiya. You've had your ear done? Yeah, well, that's why I'm here, actually. I'm on the scrounge. You're not looking for a parrot. Pardon? A parrot to go with your earring. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, Dad's been getting at me, too. Looks great. Thanks. Actually, it's quite sore. Oh, surgical spirit? Yeah, I know. That's what I'm here for. I haven't got any. I'll get you some. What, uh, what does your old fellow have to say about it? Oh, not a lot. I think he's worried it might affect my future. Well, you'll know of it, will or not, won't you? Pardon? Well, you'll just be able to look into your crystal ball. <laughs> oh, take my notice, Gordon. He might give away. Thanks. Just bring it back when you're ready. Yeah, yeah, I will do. Right, I'll see you then. Sure. Bye-bye. You, uh, wouldn't like to read me palm before you go. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> you're telling me. Here, here. Now, listen, Jim, lad. <laughs> hey, what's this? Oh, yeah. I had a bit of an accident with that. This is the one white shirt I've got. Or it was the one white shirt I had. Well, it came out like that in the wash. Oh, why? It's your fault. Mine? Oh, it was that stupid jumper you got off the market. They said that jumper wouldn't run. <laughs> wouldn't run. <laughs> you might as well stuck a tin of paint in the machine. Hang on, that jumper was made of wool. So? So? You're supposed to do woolens and cotton separate, aren't you? Look, if you know so much about it, why don't you do the wash? Well, aren't you going to take it? Behave. You right, then? Yeah. You off, then? Uh, yeah. I'll buy a new shirt when my ship comes in. The Titanic. I'll see you out. some Beatles records. What have I got to play them on? Oh, I, yeah. Uh, uh... I feel terrible now. I'll get another one, Gail. Don't worry. So, what are you supposed to say now, like? I hope you two will be very happy. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. See you, son. Yeah, see you, Dad. Uh, we'll try and call round and see you. Yeah, of course you will. See you, love. Try. Yeah. I feel terrible now. Yeah. And you? 
Me? You could at least have left in the record player. I don't believe it. Hiya. Well? What? Did you go? Where? Damon. Oh, yeah. And? And what? Well, what? I went, didn't I? What more can I say? Well, was there any jobs? Oh, yeah, millions. I'm gonna be up half the night choosing. Hey! Are you looking for a smack, lad? Because you're gonna get one in a minute. There's nothing. A few schemes I'm too late for and some community work you've got to be on the dole 12 months for. Anyway, where is it? What? Thatcher's new improved school leaving certificate for your dole card. Let's see it. Um. Didn't give us one. Oh, why? Why not? Don't know. You didn't go, did you? Yeah. Well, where is it? Damon! I went, but I didn't sign on. Why not? Well, he sent his ear there and everywhere. I was there all afternoon and I had to meet Linda at four. What? You're going out making dates with Linda and you can't even be bothered to sign on? It wasn't like that. Well, I hope she can afford to keep you because you won't get fed here if you can't be bothered to get out your pit and go down the dole. I was going to sign on. Going to? Going to? The great going to, eh? Well, who's going to give you a job? I wonder if you've got a day's work in you, lad. Well, there's no work anyway. Oh, don't be stupid. There's work if you look for it. What? Oh, wait, this job is going to your head. You sound like Paul Collins. Now you get down there tomorrow and sign on, or you don't get back in this house. Dad. Is that Damon in? Uh, no, he's not here, Dad. Has he signed on this morning? Uh, I'm not sure, but hang on a minute. I'm not lying for you. Oh, just say you think so. No. He'll batter me, go on. No. Well, I'm going now, so it's only half a lie. You better add. I've got to, haven't I? Sorry about that. There was someone at the door. Uh. I think he signed on this morning. Yeah, I think he did. OK, sure. Oh, you're not a bad one. Why didn't you sign on? Well, I'm meeting someone after the dole, aren't I? Who? Linda, of course. Ha! And what does ha mean? Well, I was speaking to her last night and she said hanging round the school gates didn't exactly appeal to her. Well, I'll be hanging round for her, this savvy. I know you will. She won't see you. Bet. What does she want? You will sign on first, won't you? Who's that? Looks lovely. Mmm, looks it. 
Yeah, be optimistic for once in your life. Right. Probably won't do any good, though. Funny. Hey, who do we ask for? Mr and Mrs Cross. All right. Hello. Oh, hi. Hello. Yes, is eh? Looks like it, doesn't it? Know where the pituitary gland is? The what? The pituitary gland. It's in the brain. Oh, you've got one, have you? Well, everyone's got a pituitary gland. A brain. How oh, funny. Are you looking at that there? <laughs> oh, hello. Mrs Cross? Yes. Come about the house. Oh, we're not seeing anybody till this evening. Oh, we realise that, but you see, we've come early because we have to be on duty this evening. Just a minute. Harold! What? There's some people here. What for? They've come about the house. Well, they're too early, aren't they? Send them away. They can't come tonight. Well, that's their problem, isn't it? They're on duty. Two young nurses. Two young nurses? What did you say? Show them in. Would you like to come in? Oh, great. Thank you. Mr Cross? That's me. Sandra McGee. How do you do, love? Hello. Oh, Kate Moses. How do you do? How do you do? This is Edna, my inebriate woman. Harold. <laughs> I'm sure it's not true. How do you do? Oh, you drive anybody to drink. <laughs> How do you do? Right. Then what shall we do first? Well, we'd like to see the house, if you don't mind. I'll show you round. I'll show them round. You go make the tea. Well, that's the tea organised. Are you ready, girls? Yes. Right. <laughs> And after this, I'll have to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Yes, yes, we understand that. I mean, you want references. Yo, yeah. But I keep getting this pain in the middle of me back. Damon. What? Oh, you know what? Oh, don't worry. You'll still be Daddy's good little girl. I'm going to sign on. Is that what you think? What? That I'm just doing this to be Daddy's good little girl? Yeah. Well, that just shows how stupid you are. Oh, see you, Cags. Damon, I know it's difficult for you, but why don't you just try and grow up a little bit? What? I'm not doing this for what my dad thinks. And I don't even care what you think of me. But he's worried sick about you. Oh, yeah. So worried sick, he nearly knocked me head off last night. He's done it to our Barry dozens of times. He's even done it to me. And he only... Just go away, Damon. No, come on. Tell me why. Come on. Well, he loves you, you pillock. Do you know, you make me laugh sometimes. Oh. You think you're the bee's knees. You think you know everything. You think you know everything about me mam and me dad and me and our baddie. Well, let me tell you something. For the last couple of years, all I wanted to do was to buy me dad a bevy with me first week's wages. Now, I don't mean youth schemes and MSC schemes and crap like that. I mean proper work, proper wages. And perhaps one day it might happen when I'm about 36. So you know nothing. So why don't you go home and read one of your little books? Put a record on. No. No, go on. Frankie goes to Hollywood. No. What are you doing? Why are hangers a crap? There's nothing wrong with them. Decrease all your clothes. Go on. We're not using that record player. What was the point of getting it? What are you doing now? I'm taking all the wooden hangers. Hey, all my stuff's on them. You just said there was nothing wrong with wire hangers. There isn't. But you leave all my stuff alone, right? It's all your stuff. There's no room for me in there. Do you know, your dad was right. What about? About you, fusspot. I'm not. I just don't want all my clothes getting creased, that's all. Go on. What? A record. No. Yeah. Terry, we can't use that. We went all the way down to me dad's for it. Yeah, you walked out on him, left him on his own and couldn't even leave him with a record player. It was all your idea. You made me do it. Yeah, but I didn't know what it was going to be like, did I? Go on, then. What do you want to do? Take it back to him. Oh, you're a case, you. Oh, can we? Two conditions. Go on. First, we spend a bit of time doing what comes naturally. Toilet's through there. You know what I mean. And what's the second condition? You give me all the wooden hangers. I'm 
back to the living room. Well, what do you think? Oh, it's lovely. It's perfect. Not bad, is it? It's just what we need. Hmm. It's all right. I expect you'll be having family up to see you, so that spare bedroom will be useful. Oh, no, there's three of us. There's Pat as well. Oh, is she a nurse too? Oh, no. Not Pat's that. not a nurse. Just works at the hospital. What does she do? Sort of general duties. Oh, a sort of auxiliary. Aye, that's right, like an auxiliary. Pat's a porter, Sandra. A porter? Yes. That's an unusual job for a woman, isn't it? Hmm, very. Well, there's women bus drivers these days, aren't there? Oh, anyway, what are the neighbours like? Uh, the neighbours? Oh, yeah, the salt of the earth. Honest. Oh, there's a fireman living here, isn't there? Been in the papers. Oh, you know about that, do you? Yeah, I read about it. Tragic case. No one can understand it. I mean, the man's as innocent as the days long. They get on well with the neighbours here. That's because if you see them, they keep to themselves mainly. And there's no nosy parkers on this close. <laughs> then you're wanted. Excuse me. <laughs> what? Speak up, will you? Do they like it? Yes, now go and make the tea. Well, we do like it, so what do we do now? Yes, I mean, bearing in mind that we have to be on duty soon. Well, as a matter of fact, all my prospective tenants, they've got to fill in a little questionnaire. All right. What do you want? I've come to meet me mates, haven't I? Did you sign on? Yeah. No jobs, then. What do you think? She's still in there. Yeah, she sent some divvy of a mate of hers out to say that she's not coming out until I've gone. Wasting your time, then, aren't you? Well, I've got plenty to waste, haven't I? The place will be in a mess, you know. Why? Cos he doesn't lift a finger. If I'm not here, it goes to pot. Terry? What? It's got the curtains drawn. I might still be in bed. At four o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, hello, son. What's your game, eh? Eh? The curtains are drawn. Oh, yeah, I uh, wanted a bit of privacy, you know. Well, we've been knocking for ages. Were you? Oh, never heard you. I had a record on. A record? Uh, of a friend. But I brought you this back. Why? That's gay. I thought you might be missing her. Oh, I was last anyway. Oh, thanks very much. Oh, it's all right, boy. But uh, that one over there is a beauty. Does everything but I make the tea. <laughs> what have you done? Hey. You tidied up. So? What's that smell? Air freshener. Air freshener? I want the place to smell nice. Nothing wrong with that, is there? Are you stopping alone? We've only just got here. Just ask it. Any chance of a cup of tea? Yeah, if you want one. Do you want one? Of course I do. You want one, though? Uh, no, we'll have to get going. Don't be soft. Sit down and have a cup of tea. Sharp your say. What are you doing here? Waiting for you. That's funny, cos I waited here yesterday for you. I came. When? Half six? Half four. You said four. Well, I know. I couldn't help it. They kept us down a dole for ages. So, what do you want? Well, I need to say I'm sorry, aren't I? Go on, then. What? Say it. Sorry. So am I. Oh, look! Hang on a minute. What? I'm sorry. Honest, I am. So, what do you want me to do about it? Accept my apology. All right, I accept your apology. Away! Look, I've got to get home. Come for a walk. With you? Yeah. I'm fed up, lad, not ours up. Oh, turn it in, will you? I nearly broke my neck getting up here yesterday. Nearly? That's a shame. Oh, funny. No, it's you that's the comedian. Think 
about me in London, did you? Look, can't we forget about London? No. Which one of those two scrubbers did you go they with? They weren't scrubbers. Slags, then? They weren't slags. Which one? None. They were gizzers and duxies. Oh, pack it in, Dave, and Duxie didn't go. Don't be soft. Of he went. Your Karen told me last night. What? Just the two of you went. You, Gizmo, and them two girls. Look, it's not what you think. Oh, drop dead. You! Mr. Cross. Nothing. Disappointed? Where's the pain coming from, then? What sort of bed have you got? There's nothing the matter with me bed. It's lovely. Mm, soft and comfy. Yeah. Change it. Change me bed? Mm-hmm. What are you doing? I've been getting examined. Took your shirt in, for God's sake. Oh, behave yourself, will you? They've seen a man's body before today. A man, yes, but not a geriatric whale. Uh, have you decided on anything? Oh, what Mr. Cross says we can move in when we like. Oh. Can I have a word with you, Harold? Of course you can. Not here, in the kitchen. She gets easily jealous, you know. And what right have you to decide? Because I'm the landlord. I'm the landlady. You're not starting to say we should turn nurses away, are you? I'm just trying to say that we should know more about them. They're nurses. They're nurses when they're on duty, but when they're off duty, they're just like anybody else. In fact... What? Nothing. Come on. Well, I've heard about nurses when they're off duty. Oh, don't be daft, woman. Old wives' tales. It's not. Look, what are they doing wearing the uniform? It's nurses' uniform, isn't it? But they're not supposed to wear the uniform when they're off duty. I used to wear my railway gear, didn't I? I don't think that's quite the same thing, somehow. You're trying to tell me they're not real nurses? We don't know, do we? I tell you what, we'll go in there and we'll talk to them. And we'll say any offer depends on satisfactory references. All right? Yeah. Right. Anyway, I've got to talk to them about the bell. The bell? I'm going to have a bell from our bungalow over there. So if I have an attack, I can just ring for them. Look, I don't want to hear any more. Just let me go, will you? In a minute. Look, Duxie was supposed to go. Yeah. He was. You were there when we arranged it. And then at the last minute, he couldn't. Yeah, so you went like a shot. Oh, Gizmo's me mate. I had to go with him. Your mate? Every time I see you, you're trying to get rid of him. Oh, that's only because you're there. Yeah, well, I won't be around much longer. God, you know what? I don't understand you, honestly. You'd see me let me mate down, would you? Mates have got nothing to do with it, Damon. You went down to London because of those two girls. I didn't. You did? I didn't. Oh, all right, so you never even saw them? Well, of course we saw them. Yeah, saw so much of them. You couldn't phone me or... I was busy. Oh, I bet you were. Now, just let me go, will you? No. Look. Does it really matter what went on down there? Oh, no, not at all. Then what are we carrying on like this for? Look, soft lad, just what you think I am, eh? Some stupid little tart you can pick up at the gates when you feel like it. You think I've got nothing better to do than hang around waiting for you to show up? I didn't mean to stand you up. Yeah, well, I've got news for you. I have got better things to do. Oh, I. Such as? Wouldn't you like to know? Yeah, I would. Well, mind that. You were seeing someone while I was down in London, weren't you? Yeah. And you've been calling us everything for carrying on with those girls. Ah, so you did oh, go with Oh, shut it! Who was he? No one knew, no. He's not a Dolice. What? He's still at school? No. Working. Big deal? Yeah. I could get work, you know. Yeah. I could. They were begging me to stay down in London. I was so good. Painter and decorator, that's me. Damon, grow up. Go and find yourself another mug. You'll see. I'm going to go down there and save me time. 
and then I'm going to set up my own business. And don't think I'll be worried about the likes of you when I've got money coming out of my ears. You. You cow. I've got a future, see? I've got a future. So, uh, we can take the record player back then? Oh, yeah, of course you can. I appreciate the thought, like, but I don't really need it. Must be a good friend. Hey? Lending you a record player like that. Oh, yeah. Good friend. Finish, love. Oh, yeah. How about you, Cherry? Oh, no, I've got loads, yeah. Oh, take it on. You're all right for now. Have another one. We'll have to go. Oh, don't be soft. He wants us to. He's me dad. I'll wash it later. Um, you're all right for money? Oh, yeah, fine. You? Yeah, sound. You going to match that, Might do, yeah. You think that car's safe out there? The car? Of course it is. Well, the kids robbed one last week. Did they? Set fire to it. Whose was it? Terry, come on. I'm sorry, Jack, but I'm not going to hide away in that bedroom any longer. Well, Mr Cross said we could move him when we wanted. I know I did, love, but Edna wants to go through the formalities. I just want to do things proper, that's all. Well, how do we do that, then? Well, you'll have to give us some references, and we've got a tenancy agreement. Where is it? I haven't got it. Well, you had it last. You had it last. Oh, God, blimey. See now, dementia. You must have come across it. Oh, he's all there with his cough drops. Hypochondria, that's all. Hypochondria is an illness. Oh, here we go. Keats into psychosomatic illnesses. Oh. Look, hypochondriacs need treatment as much as anybody else. Sympathy and reassurance. Aye, so the next time his ball of wind turns into coronary thrombosis, send him to Keith. I think I will. <laughs> Found it. Hmm. Good. We'd prefer a properly drawn-up agreement so we all know where we stand. Exactly. Now, we'll sign this and bring it back with our references. Now, is £200 enough? You what? Advance rental. Oh, there's no rush with the references. And, um, this is Michelle. Uh, Jack mentioned you. He didn't mention you. What old friends, aren't we, love? Is that your record player? Yeah. Very nice. Are you right? Oh, you're not going on my account, are you? No. My dad's dead keen for us to stay late, but um, we've got to go. Come on. You'll pop back and see us sometime, eh? Oh, I yeah, but I'll have to give you plenty of warning, future won't I? Life goes on, Sally. There's been an awful lot going on in there, hasn't there? Oh, for God's sake, grow up. <laughs> See ya, Paul. Try. See ya, Zom. See ya. <laughs> See ya, dirty owl. Well, how would you like that, eh? I'm only gone five minutes and he's got some woman in there. Jealous? Behave, it's me old fella. Ah, oh, well, Dad still do it. That dressing gown she was wearing, I bought some that. I know nothing. The Duxie never went. I thought you knew. Honest to God, Karen. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, she was a bit of a sneak anyway, wasn't she? Look, you don't know what you're talking about, right? All right.
Why are you go then? How do you think? One tenancy agreement for the reading and signing of uh, it. Never fails, is it, eh? Oh. A nurse's uniform. <laughs>